Hey guys, it's Chris. Thanks for stopping by. Last time we covered the first five mods and upgrades you should do to the Rally 300. Today we're going to add five more to the list to round out our top 10 mods and upgrades that you should do on your 300 Rally. Okay, so no surprise, the Rally 300 is probably going to spend, for most of us, a good portion of time off-road because that's really where this bike shines. Lightweight, nice handling, it's great fun off-road but off-road brings its own challenges because if you're going to drop the bike, you tend to do that in technical riding situations. And so we're going to want to be prepared for that. That's why today's mods and upgrades are going to be mostly focused around making the bike more durable when you happen to have a little mishap off-road. So in no particular order, let's dig in on the five. First up, the skip plate that comes on the 300 Rally is mostly just a thin piece of plastic. It doesn't provide any protection whatsoever. So don't be fooled. You're going to want to change it out right away. Also contributing to the need for the skid plate is the fact that the suspension is really quite soft. It's no surprise a lot of people have talked about that, which means if you start to get used to the bike and carry a little more speed and you're off-road, the bottom of the bike will tend to hit the ground more likely than if the suspension was firmed up. So for that reason, I think you can find great options to replace the stock plastic skid plate with something aluminum, thicker, that can really do the job of protecting your motor. If you check my channel i've got a great little option that i found on ebay for around 100 bucks worked out very well fits really nicely with the bodywork and the plastic it integrates very seamlessly really nice fit and finish very durable i think you like it but i leave it to you to find one to protect the underneath of the bike because this is a no-brainer you're gonna hit something sooner or later you don't want that to be a problem so as far as value for dollar this is an upgrade that's not a lot of money that will save you in the long run number two on the list is getting yourself a good set of aluminum handlebars. No surprise at the this price point. It's not a surprise that Honda puts mild steel handlebars on the bike. But if you've ever tried to ride with bent bars, this is a recipe for disaster. You're gonna want to replace these bars at your earliest convenience if you're gonna be taking the bike off-road. Now, if you don't intend to ride off-road, this might be one you scratch off your list. But if you're not sure, do yourself a favor, get yourself a good set of bars. At the end of this video, I'm gonna walk you through swapping out the stock bars for these pro taper contours and the adapters that you need to make these work. Whether you go fat bar or regular standard size bar, either way, as long as they're aluminum, they're gonna handle the falls, the little tip overs, no problem. You'll keep on riding, you won't even notice. So this is another one that's good value for your dollar and a great insurance policy against getting home safely with no hassle. All right, next up, let's talk about mud because mud is sand and water and dirt and it acts like sandpaper on moving parts. And the stock sprocket cover does a really good job of holding the mud in the water against your sprocket and your chain. Not a good thing. You're gonna wanna change that out for a proper sprocket cover. I do a separate video where I evaluate a couple options for you, but nevertheless, whichever way you go, whatever product you choose, you're gonna want something that evacuates the mud and the water really easily. That's gonna be a good investment to preserve your chain and your sprockets. Okay, next up is something that not a lot of people are complaining about as it relates to Rally 300, but it's a bit of a pet peeve for me, which is the stock tires. I think you need to swap them out at your earliest opportunity because while they're not terrible, they're really not good. The bike does not give you a solid planted feeling on the road or off-road. So this is definitely an upgrade that if you don't do it, you kind of don't notice. But once you do, you're like, wow, okay, that's how good this bike can really feel. So what I've found with the stock tires is that on the highway, the bike feels nervous. When you load it up for camping, the bike actually does this very unnerving weaving thing. Off-road, they're not as bad, but they really don't give you a good bite as compared to something that's a little more aggressive. So depending on what you're after, here's a couple good choices for you. So for the 300 Rally, one of the best choices you can make is the Moto Z Tractionator Rallies. This is a great rear tire for this type of bike. Lots of big gaps, very tall knobs, and the durability of this tire, most folks that I talk to get eight to 10,000 miles out of this tire. So from a value for dollar perspective, this is an excellent choice for the back of the 300 Rally. Up front, the matching Moto Z Tractionator Rally's front tire is super aggressive. Very good tread, a lot more bite than what comes with the stock tire. You're gonna love this tire off-road. If however, you don't need the bite, the aggressive bite that this has off-road and you're gonna spend more time on-road, I'm gonna say an Anarchy Wild is maybe a better choice than this as far as a more street-friendly front tire choice that still has great bite off-road. And out back, if you're gonna spend more time on the road and you want a smoother ride, a slight variation that Moto Z makes is they make the Tractionator in an adventure version where the knobs are closer together 
so that it's a smoother ride with the rear tire. So once again, depending on your priority, whether you want a smooth ride, in which case you go with the Tractionator Adventure Tire Outback and the Anarchy Wild up front, or you want that super aggressive bite off-road, in which case the Moto Z Tractionator rallies tires front and rear. Either way, both sets of tires are going to give you more confidence riding on-road and off-road than these stock tires ever did. So well worth your time and effort. Certainly a lot of folks are going to burn off the stock tires before they get to putting fresh rubber on. But once you do, you're going to notice the durability and the handling much improved both front and back. And the Tractionator rallies are the tires that I'm going to run with for this season front and back as I put the 300 rally through its paces. Okay, so last but not least is a top rack. AXP makes a phenomenal top rack. It's one of the biggest racks that I've seen on the market. It's a great way to round out your bike without spending a ton of money. You don't need full luggage. You just need some way to kind of strap things down. And this top rack is really big. Um, it makes it easier if you want to do like a DIY top case trunk type deal, um, or if you just want to strap a really large dry bag to this, it is a great way to improve the versatility of the bike without spending a whole ton of money. Well worth rounding out your top 10 on modifications that really help the versatility of the bike is a top rack like this one. So now that we've rounded out our top five, I'm going to take my own advice and swap out these handlebars for my pro tapers. I'll walk you through it. Let's get started. You might notice as I'm doing this that the, the bars already have risers. I typically always put risers on the bikes because a lot of um, our time is spent off-road with these machines um, and adventure riding a lot of dirt roads, Jeep trails, that kind of stuff, pretty rough. And it's always tougher on your body if you're sitting the whole time. So. I wanna make sure that the bikes, the bars are tall enough so I can stand comfortably for a long period of time. So I'll take the risers out, uh, but then when I do the adapters, it's gonna add a half an inch to the bar height anyways. So it's kind of a same for same type deal. These are a little bit taller, but I think it's still gonna work out good. So let's go ahead and take all of the switch gear off as well as the hand guards, and then we'll loosen off the bars. So first up, I'm gonna use a five millimeter Allen head uh, to take the Zeta hand guards off. There's a lock inside the bar, which you're probably aware of. And it's usually pretty tricky to get it to come loose once it's been uh, squeezed in there. Uh, but I'm gonna try my best to try and get it out of there. But if you're not successful or if I'm not, uh, either way, I'm gonna leave a link in the information below so that you can get the little replacement piece if you happen to be in the same situation I'm in where you've got hand guards in place and you can't get that little, little guy out of there. Yeah, it's clear. I'm not gonna have any luck in getting that, the lock. It's, uh, it's mashed pretty good inside the bar, so I'm gonna need replacements. All right, the next piece is to loosen off the switch gear and the throttle tube. And there's, so there's one Phillips screw at the back or facing forward, and I, there should be one underneath. If you could see this, it's basically on an angle, it's like 45 degree angle coming in from the bottom. And this came off super easy. So now what I'm gonna do is loosen off the levers. So I'll do that before I un uh, loosen off the pinch bolts on the bars. And this is an eight millimeter socket head. So this switch assembly is actually wired to the, the front brake lever. So this all has to move together. This switch assembly does seem like it's locked on even though the screws are loose. I'm gonna loosen those screws just a little bit more. All right, there it goes. Pinch bolts, which in this case are six mil, but they're not stock, so your, yours will be different. Then I'll slide the throttle tube out. It doesn't quite make piece. it with both ends attached, so let's just get the lever all the way off this. As is usually the case with the wires and the cables, typically a little too far to pull your stuff. And I don't want to unbundle everything from behind the triple tree. But with this piece removed, there's just enough distance to clear the throttle tube. So I've gone with a CR high bar, which is 95 millimeters from the top to the clamps. So there's a little bit more rise to the, the uh, CR high pro taper that's on here. And with that coupled with the adapters, which will give me another half an inch, 
I should end up pretty much exactly where I was with the with the bigger spacer on on the triple clamp that I, with the stock bar. Again, but it's personal preference in terms of what your preference is as far as the height of the bar, and and obviously it matters how tall you are. But the CR high is a good choice for this particular setup. For my height, I'm about six feet tall, and I like to do a lot of standing when I ride. So the next step in the process is to use the Pro Taper adapters, mount those in in here, and then get the bar in place. All right, and internally, they, these ones look like they're about a six millimeter Allen head. So in installing the adapters, it's worth noting that the adapter itself is gonna hang out to the outside of your clamps, handlebar clamps, which means these first two bolts will clamp to the bike, the second two bolts will hold the bar. Also note that the uh, torque spe spec for this is 17, 15 to 17 pounds. And I'll get some Loctite on those, get these in here, torque them down, All right, so that's torqued into place and it's got Loctite. The bars come with plugs in the end. They're just plastic plugs. If you got a pick or a very small screwdriver, you can get in under that. In reverse order, the same way we took everything apart. So I'm gonna do the clutch side first, slide everything through. Okay, and in terms of exactly how I want them positioned, I'd like to have them as high as possible. So I'm just gonna pivot them a little bit forward. There's a, there's a middle mark and a plus one plus two and a plus minus one minus two. I've rolled these plus one forward, which gives them a little more lift. It also gives me a little longer reach, which I like a little more real estate between that seat foot peg handlebar triangle. Um, feels a little more natural and standing up, this feels just right. So I can clamp them down right now, torque them and then finish off my controls. So the other piece that I have to do here is also take off the original grip off the throttle tube and install a new set of grips. So I'm gonna use Scott's double density grips. These feel and look pretty similar to the stock grips. So I'm just gonna cut this one off and pop those on there with a little Renthal grip glue. So in gluing and installing any grips, you're going to have to be very careful on the throttle side not to put any glue in under the throttle tube. Uh, make sure you only add glue to the throttle tube itself. When you're working with glue, it's a good idea to have gloves on and have a little bit of paper towel hanging out. Grab whatever's dripping. And then I'm gonna snug up the switch gear and just leave a little bit of gap until tomorrow. Once everything's dry, I can slide it back and tuck it in together so it's close for your thumb. You can see the OEM grip actually has little grooves that line up with all of the nooks and crannies that are built into that throttle tube, even on the sides and the edges. My advice to take all the bumps off, take the ridge off the end, and then I think We'll have no problem. Put a little bit of grip glue, slide it on, and we're good to go. All right, success. It's on there. Okay, so that's good because uh, no glue has dripped past the, um, the little flange on the throttle tube that you saw a little earlier. And so that if I just leave that for eight hours, uh, the grips will be fully glued on and then I can go about putting hand guards back and, and adjusting the levers. So I'm gonna leave it for overnight and then we'll come back and finish up this job and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so the grips have had a whole day to cure. They're on here really well and fortunately there's no glue has oozed out or anything. So the action on the throttle is completely uh, uninhibited, which is great. Just be careful there. It's really hard to undo if you make a mistake in that regard. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna tighten up the uh, the levers and the controls, tighten those down. And then I'm gonna take off the, the, the gray piece of the grip in order to make room for, for the anchor that I'm gonna put in here. 
I've got a set, because I couldn't take the anchors out of the original set of borers, I got a set of Sykra replacement anchors. Super inexpensive, I think they cost me 10 bucks. So we'll pop those in here and get the, the hand guards on and then we'll be done. Because I do so much standing when I ride, I like to have the, uh, the levers pointed down about probably, I don't know what that angle is, but maybe 30 degrees so that they're a little easier to grab personal preference in that regard, but getting the levers where I want them and then spinning the controls so that nothing interferes and it all kind of lines up nicely. As far as levers go in terms of tightening down the perch, I don't over tighten them. Hand tight is fine because in the event they fall and they get bumped, I'd rather they spin a little bit than bend the lever, but you want them snug enough so nothing moves around that by accident. You know, I'm not gonna use a torque wrench on that. So in the Cycler kit, there's two different anchors. There's a thin one and a thick one and depending on the inside diameter of your bars, one should work out just fine. So go ahead and cut off the end of the grip and get the anchor put in place. So that came off pretty easily. The large one is too big, so the small one is just what we're after. And these ends should be snug down about as hard as you can do them with a T-handle. What you want is the anchor to bite into the bars so that if you need to take the handguard off, it stays put so that it doesn't move around when you're trying to take it off. Because if, if it's not snugged in really tight and you try and take hand guards off, you can end up with that bit of that anchor getting loose inside the bar and it's impossible to get again and you'll have to buy it all over again. With the hand guard snugged up in place, last piece is to get the uh, side view mirrors spun back on. All right, so now that we've got the bars in place, I finished my five upgrades and mods and right now I've got a bike that's really pretty well configured to do most things very well. With the top rack being as big as it is, I've been venture bike riding with guys who just use a dry bag. I'll give you an example right here. Here's a 60 liter dry bag. And with a top rack that's this big, it is totally cool to have this dry bag strapped into place. And you know what? A bag like this has got as much room as a couple of saddlebags. So as far as where we've ended off with this last set of five mods, you've got a bike that's really super versatile for weekend camping, short trips, around town. It can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, in the next couple videos, we'll try and extract a little bit more horsepower to the bike and we'll finish rounding out all the adventure mods that you want to do for long distance, week, two week long travel and just make the most of that kind of setup. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, smash the like, subscribe to follow along, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.